Today on the Tech Bytes podcast, we're talking zero trust network access or ZTNA with sponsor Fortinet and as organizations grapple with controlling end user access to applications and services, particularly when those end users and applications could be anywhere. Fortinet is here to make the case that it's the right platform for ZTNA. Our guest is Peter Newton. He is Senior Director of Products and Services at Fortinet. Peter, welcome to the podcast. So it feels right now like that the marketing gravity around ZTNA is getting so heavy that it's in danger of collapsing in on itself and turning into a black hole that sucks in everything else. What is driving all this energy around ZTNA? ZTNA is getting a lot of airtime right now simply because it's the right solution. It's the, uh, effectively the evolution of remote access. And you know we've all been in a pandemic, we've been working remotely, and we've really recognized the limits of VPN technology for doing remote access. And so organizations are looking for a better means of getting users to applications. And I think the big difference for me with ZTNA is it's less about, it's obviously access is the first thing, but it's also about controlling access to individual applications. Absolutely. And that's where ZTNA shines versus VPN is it uh, addresses the work from anywhere uh, scenario where companies are trying to figure out how can I support my workers when they're in the office, when they're at home, but also they're grappling with the cloud journey. They're moving more applications uh, from uh, being hosted on-premise to being hosted in public clouds and private clouds. And they want to be able to control that as well. ZTNA it's, supports yeah, it's both sides. Both it's that. actually both sides, isn't it? It's, it's not only are the users more mobile, you've gone from, you know, a, a user, a company with 10,000 employees used to have a hundred branches say, and mm-hmm. now they've got 6,000 branches effectively because people are working in a distributed exactly. fashion. Branch one. And that's and that's here to stay, give or take it to some level or another. We don't know what, what level it's going to be, but it's going to be something. And that authenticating those people is changing because once we used to just authenticate them when they got to work, they'd log in in the morning, log out in the evening. We also now need to do this persistent or repeated authorization or checks to say, are you still who you say you are? Because you actually don't know where they are. You've lost that one authentication step of now you're in the office. And that's exactly true. And that those are that's some of the key concepts behind the zero trust approach in general, is you want to do that ongoing verification. And ZTNA enables that in this remote workforce uh, application of it. So that now with ZTNA, you can do application, uh, you can do sorry, user verification, you can use device uh, identity and posture checks for every single session for every single application. So you know, you you launch three applications in the morning, you stop, go to a meeting, you come back. When you launch those three applications again with ZTNA, you're going to get revalidated. Your device is going to get re-identified, uh, re-foster hmm. checked uh, as to make sure that everything is still safe to connect you to that application. Okay, so let's break down all the pieces here because there's a lot involved. So if you're talking about devices and end users, there's obviously a client part of this. Yes. Yeah, there's basically two different models for ZTNA. One is called a services-initiated model. Um, and the other one is a client initiated model. We've uh, at Fortinet have it gone for the client initiated because we see that as uh, a more user friendly and we think really a more capable model. It's more user friendly because unlike on the service initiated, when a user goes to connect to a cloud hosted service, um, they need to typically download a, a plug into their browser to, to do some of the ZTNA stuff. Uh, so then you've got your, you know, depending on the links, you could be looking at a a while while that gets downloaded and installed. With the client initiated, the client is already installed on the device that's connecting. And so one, it's a faster experience for the end user, but two, actually you have much more control and visibility of that device. So from an administrative standpoint, uh, you have more information about what the state of that device is, what what it's doing, what it has been doing, uh, so that when it does connect and you're doing those posture checks, you're doing that validation of do you want to bring this device onto your network and access mm. applications, you got a whole lot more information. So that's why we've gone so think, with the, a client. So initiated. I think the way you're looking at it is you're saying that zero trust isn't just about authenticating you wherever you are and authorizing you and then authorizing you prior, because to some extent those types of principles are table stakes. It's also the continuous authorization and reauthorization. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm 2FA all the time. It's a, it's a subjective revalidation. If something significant has changed, I might want to reinforce the author, the the login process or something. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, if you had to uh, do a username password for every single session for every single application, you go crazy. So you know, <laughs> ZTNA uh, does support single sign-on, and to your point, it can trigger 
a username, password, or multi-factor. If it sees something that's out of context, that it want, or maybe the application being accessed is, you know, the crown jewels of the company. You really want to make sure that this is indeed an individual that you want connecting uh, and accessing that application and not someone who's hacked credentials or stolen something. You mentioned posture checks. What is it that you're checking? Are things like the, the operating system, the version, is there AV on the client, that kind of thing? That thing, as well as uh, are there any other significant events that might have happened on the device that make it put it in a vulnerable state? Uh, so it's looking at all of those capabilities. And, uh, you know, also you're also checking to make sure that the user is, uh, you know, should have access to that uh, application, i.e. It's someone in your IT department gets access to the IT applications. They don't necessarily get access to the R&D applications. Um, so you want to check all of that information. All right. So that's the client part. How do we get to mapping those clients to applications and what they're allowed to access and when? The how of that is basically utilizing a lot of user groups because users of the similar type will need to have access to similar applications. It's most easy to administer that with uh, role-based rules. So then you just set up those rules in the in the FortiGate. The FortiGate will then uh, enforce those as users go to connect to those applications. Okay, so I'm thinking of sort of a traditional, you know, Active Directory structure where I've got my HR group, my engineering group, et cetera. Yes. Am I pulling that into a FortiGate or am I recreating it in the FortiGate? Oh, no, no, no. You're just referencing it. Earlier, someone said that ZTNA has to do the authentication. Well, I would nuance that a bit to say that ZTNA pulls on whatever authentication you have in place. You don't have to create a whole new thing. And similarly here for the user groups, you're not creating a whole new thing. You're really leveraging the uh, user groups, the role-based uh, control that you already have, the authentication systems that you already have. And we're just then using zero trust principles to apply that for every session uh, when someone goes to access the application. Mm. Okay, so you're not talking about me having to essentially recreate my entire, you know, AAA or radius infrastructure, or my directory infrastructure. I'm already, I'm leveraging that and sort of coordinating it with the Fortinet products. Exactly. Yes. As you know, the, the Fortinet products are kind of based around this uh, security fabric concept. These products that work together to give the visibility across the attack surface. They're integrated so they share information and they're automated so they can actually take automated action. And importantly, it's not just Fortinet products that do this and have integrations and can share information, but there's a whole ecosystem of security vendors. And, you know, for example, we're talking about authentication right now. Uh, the Fortinet security fabric works with, you know, Okta and Microsoft and Ping and a lot of these other uh, authentication providers, as well as having our own authentication solution. We have Forti Authenticator and Forti Token for that multi-factor capabilities. But the point is all of these are integrated together and ZTNA brings these new zero trust capabilities into that mapping users and connecting users to applications, but it ties on all the parts already existing in the security fabric. So we mentioned the 40 gates. Is this a separate sort of ZTNA appliance I'm using, or am I tying in this into uh, you know, any Fortinet firewalls I'm running? Hey, that's a good point. Uh, ZTNA is an unlicensed feature from Fortinet. So that means that if you own a FortiGate, you have our FortiClient running, then this is simply a new toy that you can uh, open up and play with. Uh, you upgrade to uh, a 7 out X firmware on both of those, and the ZTNA capabilities are there. It's just another example of how Fortinet continues to integrate more into our FortiOS, that's our operating system on our FortiGates and bringing more unlicensed features. We did this a couple of years ago with SD-WAN and that's been wildly successful for us. Uh, yeah, we're that's, and that's a key thing here is that most organization want to nickel and dime you with every feature that's in the firewall. One of the, now that's not to say that you don't have licenses and licensing levels, but you're also not making it just inordinately complicated to buy your product. I would say that's one of Fortinet's strengths. So I think that's why the FortiGate is the absolutely most popular firewall in the world. Uh, we ship more FortiGates than the next three competitors combined. Uh, I think our installed base is somewhere in the you know six or seven million units out there now. So it's mm -hmm. uh, the approach that Fortinet has taken to building the FortiGates, doing our own ASIC, so we have the power to power the, the next-gen firewall, to power the SD-WAN, to power a wireless controller in there, to power a switch controller in there. And now we're adding on ZTNA as another capability that we have as just a part of the base offering. Those are all unlicensed features in the sense that yeah. you buy a 48, 
you get all those things for free. And on provided you've upgraded to the latest firmware, which includes it and all that sort of stuff. Well, uh, from now, a security but, standpoint, you always want to be on the latest firmware <laughs> so that you have everything working as best as it can. Yeah, well, you know, that, there's a difference between what we want and what the real world looks like, and we have to acknowledge that that's there, you know. Or, or uh, as the CEOs tend to say, every customer journey is different. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, or unique is another word. You know, save me, save me. I guess the question here is, now I know that, 40 net firewalls have a custom ethic mm-hmm. and that is Karen intuitively because most other firewalls now just use, you know, bog standard x86 motherboards, usually standard reference templates from Intel. And then maybe they add a fancy nick and that's their, their speed. Is that somehow how you manage to get these features into the box or is that, is that unique in some way? Yeah, that's core to, to who Fortinet it is and why we're so successful and that we are the only security company that does have that custom ASIC. But it's the same idea as, you know, your, your GPU unit, you know, you can run graphics on your CPU. It just takes longer because it's not optimized for those functions. Hmm. In the same vein, we have a custom security ASIC that can do those ASIC functions in hardware. And so it, you have your CPU there, but it's doing the more general purpose stuff. Uh, So that enables us to do stuff like software uh, SSL decryption. Uh, where it doesn't take down the performance of the box by 80% like you see on on the more general uh, CPU-based uh, security yeah. solutions out there. Or well, they lean into the hard, the acceleration inside the CPU at best. Um, yeah, but even there, we because we do both the hardware and the ASIC as well as the operating system, that we have an mm-hmm. extremely tight coupling and can get the most performance out of that uh, combination. So you sort of anticipated my next issue, which was that, okay, the more functions I start piling onto this box, next-gen firewall, SD-WAN, IPS, and now ZTNA, I'm going to start worrying about a performance hit. If you look at all the functions that we have and offer, you can turn those all on and compare it to a similar price box from a competitor. We'll still have two to three times the throughput. And all that's due to this tight coupling between the custom ASIC and the, and the firmware that we offer to uh, enable you to turn on all those features and get the get all you, you can out of the box uh, for all that we put into it. And then I guess my other question would be, OK, you're doing all these things, but are you you know doing them all sort of mediocre? Am I or like this is again, we get back to this best of breed argument versus, you know, put it all on one platform. Well, uh, we are always adding new capabilities uh, to our solutions. And I think as a a great testament to the fact that we do do them well, uh, you you guys have heard of Gartner. They do (laughs) magic quadrants to talk about various technologies. We're the leader in the next-gen firewall quadrant, as well as the leader in the SD-WAN quadrant with the same exact product. So it's the same box running the same firmware, they're just testing different flavors of it. And we are industry leaders on both of those. So I think that's a great example to show that Fortinet does best of class, even though we're doing all these different things uh, in the same box. The garden is great for the C-suite, but I think our listeners are probably more inclined to want to get a box in a lab and start throwing stuff at it and see for themselves. You could actually license just a uh, 48VM and run it there. We run the same operating system across every single box. So you could buy one of our lower end uh, units for not too much and get into a lab and start playing with it. And you can see all the features that we have. We also got demo videos on our website and, and uh, other information. So if someone wants to learn more, they can go to fortnite.com. We have zero trust featured prominently on there. So it should be easy to find uh, our ZTNA solution. All right. Well, we've come to the end of our time. If you're thinking about ZTNA and you want to start building a short list, Fortinet may be something you want to consider. And, and Peter, where would you send folks if they want to do some uh, information gathering on their own? Fortinet is a strong believer in Zero Trust. So you come to our website, you will see uh, Zero Trust featured there. So fortinet.com uh, is where you can go. And you'll certainly be able to find about our overall Zero Trust solution, as well as specifically our ZTNA solution. All right, that's Fortinet.com, nice and simple. Thanks, Peter, for joining us, and thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. You can find this and many more fine, free, technical podcasts along with our community blog. That's all at PacketPushers.net. You can follow us on Twitter at PacketPushers, like us on Facebook, and rate us on Apple Podcasts. And last but not least, remember that too much networking would never be enough.